Godric returns, Hoyt hits the road, and a lot, I mean a lot, of vampire goo. I'm out, so if you haven't seen last night's True Blood, gone, 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 this is your official spoiler alert. Leave it to David Archuleta, I mean Godric, to arrive and talk some godly sense into Eric and his sister. That is, until Lilith crashes the party, naked as ever, and rips his throat out. I'm still a little unclear as to whether Bill has really lost his way or if he's just playing along in one of the most epic insider schemes ever. Either way, Jessica's involved now, so we can now take comfort in the fact that we're not the only ones that think he's acting bad shit. Crazy. Speaking of Jessica, Hoyt calls her and Jason to a sad little three-way day at Merlot's and tells them that he's fleeing to Alaska. I can't for the life of me understand why they're trying to convince him to stay. His life has pretty much gone to sh So much so that he can't even move on with his pathetic life without getting glamored into forgetting about Cheeto-haired Jessica and his ex-BFF Jason. Sad, sad little man. Well here's to hoping that Jess and Jason will use this opportunity to start again, guilt-free. Once this whole vampire takeover thing blows over, that is. In Sookie land, after getting nearly mauled by vampire Mike, totally forgot about that guy by the way, she and Jason do a little sleuthing and unveil a mysterious scroll under Grand's floor that may have the key to their parents' murder. Turns out that it's an ancient fairy contract, duh, that basically explains that Sookie's life has pretty much been signed away decades or centuries before she was even born and her parents are dead because of it. As if Sookie didn't have enough shit to worry about, is anyone else confused as to why she has hasn't fled to Alaska yet. Meanwhile, back at the authority, Russell throws a ridiculous hissy fit. We're talking jumping up on tables, throwing shit, and by shit, I mean Salome, French accent coming out, southern vampire ghetto up in here. He literally just stormed out, true hissy fit style, so what's up his sleeve next? Your guess is as good as mine. Speaking of hissy fits, something tells me that Tara stabbing and beheading their new vampire sheriff is probably not the smartest way to live in the wind with Pam. Without having any clue what the consequences will be, Tara wants to stay and fight. Of course she does. Has everyone on this show lost their f***ing mind? So, are Tara, Pam, and the future of Fantasia totally doomed? Will Luna and Sam save Emma? Only two more episodes left, so check back with me next week for more True Blood Scoop.